Hello friends, this video on Nuclei Part 20 is brought to you by ExamPure.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till Part 19 before going ahead with Part 20. Let us now talk about the nuclear fusion reaction. As mentioned before here, combination of two lighter nuclei will give rise to a relatively heavier nuclei and nucleus and here also a large amount of energy will be released. Huge amount of energy is released. Now in this case, temperature at, I mean, there is another important concept in a nuclear fusion reaction. What happens in a fusion reaction? Two nuclei are combining to form a heavier nucleus, right? Now at the same time, I mentioned before also that whenever we talk about a nucleus, there is a force of repulsion between the protons, right? Because all the protons are positively charged, so they tend to repel each other and this repulsive force is nothing but the Coulomb's repulsive force, <coughs> right? So when two lighter nuclei come closer to each other, the Coulomb's repulsive force will increase, that means the two nuclei will repel each other. Right? So the Coulomb's repulsive force becomes our opposition to the fusion. Right? So if we want nuclear fusion to take place, then it should take place at a temperature at which the protons would have enough energy to overcome the Coulomb's barrier. Now this much temperature, so for this we need a real high temperature. Are you getting a point, getting my point? Because since in this case, two nuclei will fuse with each other only when they come nearer. Now when the nucleus are coming towards each other, the repulsion between the proton, proton will increase. So that means this proton should have enough energy to overcome the Coulomb's repulsive force. Now Coulomb's repulsive force is also known as the barrier height because in this case the Coulomb's repulsive force is acting as a barrier to the phenomenon of nuclear fusion. So how do the protons, how can the protons get that much of energy? Now if we rise, raise the temperature to a very high value, at a very high temperature the protons will have that much energy that it can overcome the Coulomb's barrier. That is why nuclear fusion always takes place at a very high temperature. So this is where the concept of thermonuclear fusion comes into picture. What is thermonuclear? Thermo means heat. Nuclear, so heat plus nuclear fusion. That is called thermonuclear fusion. So increasing the temperature of the material until the particles have enough energy due to their thermal motions alone to overcome the Coulomb barrier. This is known as thermonuclear fusion because in case for nuclear fusion to take place, <coughs> temperature also plays an important role. So what do we do? We increase the temperature of the material till the material gains enough energy due to its thermal motion. When it has enough thermal energy that it can overcome the Coulomb's repulsive force, then nuclear fusion can take place. So therefore this is known as thermonuclear fusion. So for thermonuclear fusion, extreme conditions of temperature and pressure are required. Application or example of thermonuclear fusion is energy generation in stars. In stars, the temperature is extremely high and in, the, in stars, huge amount of energy is generated. For example, take the best example of the star, that is the sun. From sun, we get the sunlight. We get such a huge amount of energy and the cause or the reason behind this huge amount of, uh, behind this huge generation of energy is nuclear fusion. Because since the temperature inside the sun is very high, this fusion reaction takes place and huge amount of energy gets released. So now we will talk about the energy generation in sun. Exactly what happens inside the sun. Energy generation in sun is a multi-step process. That means it occurs in different steps. So there are a total of four steps involved in the energy generation inside sun. It is also known as the proton-proton cycle because this process starts with protons. Now what happens here? Let us look at that. 
So let us look at the first step. In the first step, what happens? Two protons combine together to form a deuteron, which is also known as heavy hydrogen sometimes. So this is a, when two protons combine to form this deuteron, a positron is emitted along with a neutrino and an amount of energy is released which is 0.42 mega electron volts. Now what happens? The positron which is emitted here, this positron combines with an electron and gamma rays are formed plus 1.02 mega electron volt of energy is released. Now, this deuteron which is formed here, this deuteron combines with another proton and this forms helium-3 plus gamma rays plus 5.49 mega electron volts. Now this helium nucleus which is formed here or this hydrogen will again combine with each other to form helium nucleus plus this proton plus 12.86 mega electron volts. Now the first three steps, this is step 1, step 2, step 3 and step 4. So the first three steps which you see here, all these steps occur twice inside the sun and the last step occurs only once, right? So now if you combine all these four reactions, so what is the net reaction which tells us how much total energy is released in, by the uh, net fusion reactions taking place inside the sun? For that you have to add all these reactions, all these equations. So what do you get? So now if you add these four reactions together, you see that a total of some 26.7 mega electron volts of energy is released. That is four hydrogen atoms combine to form a helium atom with a release of 26.7 mega electron volts of energy. So if you want to see how four hydrogen atoms combine to form a helium atom with a release of 26.7 mega electron volts of energy, for that you multiply this equation by two, this equation by two, this equation by two. And then you add all the four equations because these are the processes that take place inside the sun. Now if you add them all, so what do you get? So this is 2H11, this is also 2H11. So you will get 4H11 plus, right now I am only considering the left hand side. Okay, so the left hand side will become 2 positron plus 2 electron plus 2 H12 plus 2 H32 plus 2 H11 so let me add it in this so this will become 6 H11 right so in this we are not multiplying it by 2 so this is my entire left hand side now is equal to let us focus on the right hand side. So on the right hand side, what do we have? H12, that is 2H12 plus 2 positron plus how many gamma you have? 1, 2, 3. So that means it will become 6 gamma plus 2 helium 2 3 plus 2 hydrogen plus helium nucleus 
plus 2 neutrino. Right? So, if you see this, 2 positron, 2 positron will cancel on both sides. Similarly, this 2 hydrogen will cancel and this will become so here 2 hydrogen was there so this will become 4 right because they have 6 hydrogen was there so minus 2 hydrogen on this side so this would become 4 hydrogen what else will cancel also here if you see you have I'm sorry, this is not hydrogen, this is helium. Because this helium which is formed here will again combine with another helium to form this. So here you will have this as helium. Right? So this two helium, here also you have two helium. So these two will cancel out. So what do I get? So the final expression which I get is 4 hydrogen plus 2 electron. Again, this will also cancel out 2H12, 2H12. So, this will be 4 hydrogen plus 2 electron will give helium nucleus plus 6 gamma plus 2 nu plus how much energy? 0 0.42 plus 1.02 plus 5.49 plus 12.86. So, these things will also get multiplied by 2 this into 2, this into 2, this into 2, plus this. So this comes out to be 26.7 mega electron volts. So this is the final reaction or the final nuclear fusion reaction which takes place inside the sun. Which shows that 4 hydrogen atoms combine to form a helium nucleus and with a release of 26.7 mega electron volts of energy right so this was the reaction which has been diagrammatically mentioned when i was talking about or when i was defining nuclear fusion so if you look at that diagram if you go back and look at that diagram you can see the same thing which is represented in the form of diagrams so with this i would conclude this lesson on nuclei so what did we study here we studied about the structure of a nucleus composition of a nucleus and size of a nucleus the property of radioactivity which is shown by certain heavy unstable nuclei some of the terminologies related to radioactive related to a radioactive sample like half life average life and activity of a radioactive sample Besides that, we talked about a very important thing that is the nuclear energy. How do we get nuclear energy out of nucleus? What are the two processes of getting nuclear energy? That is nuclear fission and nuclear fusion and their applications. So now I think we are good to go to go ahead with some of the problems. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, Get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.